Hey folks, welcome back for another episode of Code Club. If you have been following along here on the Riffamonas channel for the last few months, you know that I am building a package that I'm calling Phylotyper. Phylotyper is a package that will take DNA sequences and it will then tell you what type of bacteria that comes from. It's used doing this using a 16S rRNA gene. Now, again, if none of that means anything to you, that's fine, but keep watching because I think you'll still learn a lot through these videos about how to build an R package. We're getting to the point where we're almost ready to submit our package up to CRAN. And so what I'm gonna do today is one more step in that progress. We are going to go ahead and make a website that GitHub will host for us. It's gonna be generating a static website. And so this is a website that doesn't really change with user input. Um, we can basically make the web pages in Markdown and then use GitHub and GitHub Actions to then render it up as a website. This is a tool called Jekyll. Uh, Jekyll is kind of a fun tool to use. Uh, when I say fun, it's kind of like, I don't know, like pulling hair out. <laughs> it's kind of painful, but it's pretty powerful. Anyway, um, the great tools through Package Down will really make this uh, a lot easier to work with. So you don't have to uh, mess around with using Jekyll to build your site and it'll work well with all the documentation that we have been carefully preparing over the past many episodes. So here is a example of what one of these sites looks like. This is from the ggplot2 package, clearly a much more mature package than what we're working with for Phylotyper. Um, you can see that this I think looks a lot like the readme page for uh, ggplot with all sorts of great information. Across the top, there's a variety of menus. Get started is the main vignette. Um, so you'll see here, source vignettes ggplot2.rmd. You might recall in the last episode, we made a vignette in the vignettes file called phylotyper.rmd. And so that file, if the file has the same name as the package, gets linked uh, in this get started menu, okay? And so you can see all sorts of cool things there. Um, there's also reference, which kind of gives you a quick reference to the different functions that are available in the package. Uh, news about all sorts of different releases. Articles, which is what um, Jenny Bryan and Hadley Wickham in the R Packages book strongly suggest you use, perhaps instead of vignettes. Although we'll see, of course, as I already showed you, that vignettes work really well as articles. And so that's going to show up there. And then, of course, we know that ggplot2 has all sorts of great extensions that others have built. And so this is a link out to, I believe, a different website um, that shows all sorts of different extensions that build upon uh, ggplot2. And so there's all sorts of great things um, that you can do with this site. Let me show you another um, package down site page for a tool my lab has generated called Microbe ML. This is a tool for doing machine learning. Um, and this is something we published a couple of years ago. And so you'll see again, this, this package is not nearly as developed. Uh, it's, and when I say developed, I don't mean that it's like bad, but just it doesn't have as many features. It doesn't have any as many uh, functions. It doesn't have as many people working on it, right? It still works great. Um, and you'll see all this information here um, along with you know how to cite it and all sorts of different stuff. Um, and you'll see a lot of the same things, right? Like, so there's like a reference, there's an article, um, various vignettes, there's a place to put a article for the paper, uh, which is something we might actually do um, at some point if I go ahead and publish a, a resource announcement for the um, Phylotyper package. And then we've got a change log that shows all the different changes that have happened. Again, and this is gonna come from a file called news.md going all the way down to the very first release of MicropML. So Jenny Bryan and Hadley Wickham assure me as I read through the book that we can get a website up and running in five minutes. I might take a little bit longer than those five minutes as I wanna kind of explore and talk through what I'm seeing as I develop this. So let's go ahead over to our studio now and we'll get going on trying to build one of these websites for Phylotyper. As always, if you wanna get a copy of what the repository looks like right now, go down below in the description to this video and you'll see a link to uh, the GitHub repository as it currently stands, as well as a link to what it looks like at the end of today's episode. So we'll go ahead then and do use PKG down. And so that is pretty instantaneous. And we'll see a bit of information here that there's 
uh, a YAML file, YML file that's generated called underscore package down, you'll see that, what else? Uh, it created the, act, the active project. It added a variety of things to .r build ignore. Recall that the .r build ignore file will tell CRAN and all the other uh, tooling for building the package to ignore the files that are indicated in that file. Um, and then it's going to add docs, the docs directory, to .git ignore, um, because that is a directory that I believe will get generated by, um, if I had to guess, by Jekyll, <laughs> right? And then we saw, of course, this package down YAML file um, as well. And so that's all been added. And so the next thing that we can do to go ahead and build the site, we can then do package down, build site. Very good. We have our first version of the web page for Phylotyper. This is being hosted locally on my computer. You'll see again in that docs directory, there's an index.html. And so if I kind of bop back and forth between uh, these two pages for say MicroPipal and Phylotyper, it looks fairly similar, right? And so I think it's taking a lot of this index page from my readme file, which I know is in pretty bad shape right now and we'll probably want to clean up and maybe we'll do that in this episode later on. Um, yeah, and this is all, like I said, from the readme file. Um, if you look at the get started tab, we then see, uh, let me zoom in on this a little bit. We see basically the vignette that we made in the last episode, right? And so that's pretty slick um, and allowing us to look at uh, how to run this tool. Again, our tool is pretty simple, uh, only a handful of different functions. But um, I think that on the whole looks pretty good. And then there's a reference tab here that's got the different functions that we have, right? Um, and so we see that we've got the functions as well as the data uh, that's going into um, the package that will allow people to play with the play with the package, play with the functions, uh, just to kind of learn how to use it, right? This is a pretty old version of the RDP training set. We've come back to our studio here. We see a bunch of dialogue. I understand what it's doing. And so it installed Phylotyper into a temporary library. Um, it initialized the site. It did a variety of things. Um, it built an authors.html file. So all that stuff went into the docs directory, I'm pretty sure, right? And so we see we have authors.html, authors.html. We've got various license files, um, the index. Uh, there's a 404 page um, that if I open that, basically is a page not found. So we can go into the reference and then we can find like um, classify sequence.html. Let's open this up in a browser. And so we see, again, if I zoom in here a little bit more, um, we can see basically the help page for classify sequence. And then we see the examples and it's also showing the output of having run the example. So that's pretty cool, I think. Um, I'm pretty happy with how that looked, that's all Pretty cool. Uh, and again, if we go, we can navigate again around like read fast day, we see the same type of stuff here as well. All right, so let's come back here and let's now render this site up on GitHub. It's nice to have it on my local computer for perhaps um, improving the appearance of things, but ultimately we're gonna want this to live out in the wild so that people using our tool can get access to it much like we've shown already for ggplot2 MicroPML and all our favorite R packages. So again, we are going to host this site on GitHub. And so GitHub is has a great tool called GitHub Pages. My lab's website, uh, a bunch of websites I've built are all hosted through GitHub. You can get a custom URL that you can then use to, um, to, to kind of, instead of saying like github.io slash Riffamona slash Phylotyper, you could make it like schlosslab.org slash Phylotyper, right? Uh, and so you can get a custom URL to associate with it and GitHub will host these sites for you for free, which is a great price. Um, and it, again, is another reward for using version control, especially Git, is the ability to make use of GitHub pages. So if I haven't already encouraged you to make a uh, GitHub account and to run everything via Git, well, this is a great reason to do it as well, is because it instantly will make it so much easier to make your code and your data and anything else you do on GitHub publicly accessible to others. So we'll go ahead and do that now. 
And we're going to use GitHub and GitHub Actions, as I said. And so we'll then do uh, use pkg uh, down GitHub pages. This is from the use this package. And so then it says overwrite pre-existing file package down. I'm going to say yes. Very good. And so one thing that I was curious about is what did it change in package down? You'll notice that it previously had here a tilde. I wonder if I do, yeah, if I do undo, it'll go back to what it looked like before. And if I kind of redo, I can kind of toggle back and forth between those two states. And so the URL had been my home directory on my local computer. And now the URL is going to be the riffmonos.org um, domain slash phylotyper. Okay. So that's cool. Um, it then see that it initializes an empty orphan GitHub pages, GH pages branch in GitHub repo that. Um, and so it's now going to be publishing from that link, that branch, that path. Um, it then also created a .github directory. So let's find that back in our project root. Um, let's go ahead and sort things by name so it's easier to find. So right there, .github. And so then within the .github, we see that there's a, another gitignore file, and there's also a workflows directory, and there's a package down workflow. Uh, if you were with me a couple of years ago when I made this, uh, I used GitHub Actions to generate a figure every day. I think it's actually still doing that for looking at the level of droughtiness across the world over the past like 130 years. Anyway, this is the same type of thing, but what this is going to do is this is going to deploy my package to GitHub Pages to make that package down site using the GH branches branch. The GH branches branch is kind of the default branch for hosting websites via GitHub. You can also use your main branch, uh, but um, GH Pages is kind of the traditional branch that people typically use. Uh, I think the nice thing about this is that you really don't need to know much about using Git or GitHub to get this to work, and that uh, package down and use this are two great packages to make it easy to host a website for your package up on GitHub, okay? Um, and so we can kind of look through some of this and see like on a push to branch main or master or on a pull request or on a release, um, it will then run this workflow and it does it on Ubuntu. Um, just kind of checking all the stuff it does. It sets up Pandoc and R uh, and it then runs this command, um, our package down build site GitHub pages, which is what we ran uh, on my local computer, right? So let's go ahead into our terminal and I wanna see what things look like in terms of version control. I could do this through the Git tab here um, and I see that uh, this stuff has not been committed. So let's see what things look like, Git status. I'm curious if it ran any Git commands for me. So if I do Git log. Let's see. Yeah, so this is a this is a commit that I did. So it hasn't actually pushed anything up to GitHub yet, so the site isn't live, so to speak. So again, if we do git status, uh, we'll see all this good stuff. And we can then, again, do uh, git add our buildignore dot gitignore description uh, package down. And let's see, dot GitHub and I'm gonna add all the stuff, git status, we've got that. Uh, so we wanna add the git ignore. So we'll do git add dot github uh, dot git ignore. Okay, now if we check git status, everything is added and ready to be committed. And so I'll do git commit hyphen m build initial, uh, I guess I should do pkg down website for package. And git push. If I go to GitHub Riffamonis Phylotyper, I see the repository and I now see uh, the latest commit was build initial package down website for package. That is good. And you'll see that the stuff has been added like this dot GitHub uh, directory as we see, right? Um, we can go to actions. We see that now there is um, an ongoing action. I'm not totally sure what this was, pages build and deployment. Um, I'm not gonna worry about that too much, but it does seem to be a building the initial package down website for package. Um, again, you'll recall that the um, 
that YAML file to build the work package via the workflow said on a push that we should go ahead or have GitHub go ahead and build the site. And so if I click on this, I should be able to kind of maybe see some of the dialogue here and we can see uh, the variety of things that it's doing. It's doing all the different setup, getting the R dependencies, as the dependencies that my package requires, right? And so then it's gonna go ahead um, and install all the things. So uh, this might take a minute or two and I'll check back with you when it's all completed running. So that ran through taking about 13 minutes or so. So let's go ahead and open the page. If we go to riffamonis.org slash filotyper, we see our page nicely rendered here. And the title, the get started page, uh, the reference, right? Everything is there. It's up on the web. You can see it as well. So that's awesome. So there's a couple things I'd like to fix, however. So namely, the readme page needs to be fixed, as well as the references. I'd like to add some structure to this because I have these data files at the end that I'd like to kind of pull out to make them separate. So let's start with the readme to make the, the splash page here a little bit more attractive. So if we come back to our source, uh, I'm gonna go ahead for now and close that package down YAML page. Let's go ahead and close the terminal as well. And then we'll go ahead uh, back up here to our readme.rmd file. So again, this is my readme.rmd file. You'll see that there's kind of the default placeholder text that came with it when we initially created our package and created the readme file. Um, I'm gonna take some time now to perhaps kind of grab text from other places, like my description file where I have information about like what it does. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and copy this over and improve the appearance of my readme file. And I'll be, I'll be right back after I do that. You don't wanna watch me type and kind of make all my usual typos, do you? <laughs> Give me a sec and I'll be right back. All right, so I went ahead and added some information about Philotyper. Uh, I don't claim that this is a perfect readme, but it's got kind of the big, in, big, big pieces of information in here so that I don't have to look at it and see the default readme that we got when we initially created the package. All right, so that is our readme.rmd. And so it has this reminder that readme.md is generated from readme.rmd. Please edit that file. So we are reading the rmd file, but we need to go ahead and build the readme. So now we can do build readme. So uh, one of the steps in build readme was actually installing the package itself in a temporary library. I believe that's because sometimes a readme file might use the filotyper package or the package you're creating uh, to, to kind of show how to use the tools. What I did was to throw people over to the getting started page. I put in this URL, I'm not totally sure that that's gonna work. Uh, it's a relative reference link, so we'll have to test that out, but anyway, um, this is how I'm kind of redirecting people to, to see how to use it. And so then if we look at readme.md, we'll then see that we've got all this. I'm noticing that I've got package for classification. I think I'd rather maybe make it a little less blunt and say, uh, Philotyper is a package, okay? And maybe I'll go ahead and put this in curly braces with backticks, and I'll do the same thing here. All right. Great, so let's go ahead then and rerun the build readme. Very good, and again, if we look at readme, good, we've got that. Let's go ahead then and build the site. Cool, so this is our local version of the package down site. And I'm noticing a couple things that um, I wanna check on. So first, um, you'll recall I put the title in uh, curly braces and in code font. Uh, I'm probably gonna take that off also, I then say Philotyper is a package. I wonder what ggplot does. So it says ggplot2. Um, it leaves it probably out of the back ticks. It also says overview. I like that. So let's come back here and we'll say uh, this will be uh, overview. And maybe here I'll do Philotyper is, and I'll go ahead and remove this as well. All right. So the nice thing about being able to build site uh, locally and preview the site is that I can make these updates uh, relatively quickly without having to push everything up to GitHub, wait for the website to render, and then kind of rinse and repeat, right? I can do that all locally here relatively quickly, making edits 
to make sure things look the way I want them to look. So coming back to this page, um, let's see if this getting started works. Yep, that worked. Let's see, I wanted to see if this link to the data worked, that works. So I think the links that I put in all look pretty good. Um, let's go ahead then and rebuild. Uh, so we'll do build readme and then we can do build site. So it ran and I noticed that nothing changed. Um, and I think that's because I must have put my edits into the markdown file, not the R markdown file. I, I, I didn't hear you yell at me. All right, lesson learned. This is probably not the last time I'll do that, but I'll go ahead and close the markdown file to not tempt me to screw things up. So again, what I did was remove the curly brace and the back ticks, and then I'll do the same thing here. And I'll say, uh, I'll put a, a two pounds for that level section heading, which will match installation. And I'll say overview, all right, save. And then we'll go ahead and uh, build readme. And then we'll also do build site. All right, so that looks a lot better. Um, one thing that I would like to do is over here in the references, you'll see that I've got all functions in one listing. If we were to say come back to the Microp ML page and go references, you'll notice that there's a variety of different sections in here, right? That they've got main, model evaluation, plotting helpers, package data, data sets, right? And so what I wanna show you is how you can figure out how to do this, because this is a little bit different structure than what we have, uh, say, in ours, right? So if you look at ours, it's all functions. Let me make this a little bit bigger. Um, that I would like to have, say, all functions, and then data sets, right? And so the way you can modify the structure of the references is in the underscore package down YAML file. What I'm gonna do is show you that there's a great power in looking at other websites that you like how they've structured things, seeing how they do it, and then copying it over. That's a great way to learn, I find, because if you can take what someone else has done, copy it to yours, and then modify it for your own purposes, then that shows you kind of understand what you're doing. So we can click on this Octocat here in the upper right corner. That'll take you to the GitHub repository for MicropML. And then you can scroll down to the underscore package down YAML file. Uh, let me make this a bit bigger. And so what you'll see then is a whole bunch of customization in here, which is kind of cool, right? But what I'm interested in right now is this references tag. And so you can use the reference tag with different um, titles, this is YAML, to create structure that we saw. We can see main, model evaluation, and so forth, right? And so I'm gonna go ahead and grab that main. And instead of main, I'll probably do uh, functions. So I'll go ahead and grab that, and then come to my underscore package down YAML file, paste that in here. And again, I'll do functions, and I'll say uh, the functions needed to train the naive Bayesian classifier and run it on an unknown, on an unknown uh, sequence. All right, and so one thing you'll notice is that there's this DESC field, uh, and so it's like description, and then it's colon, and then it's a greater than sign. And that greater than sign allows you to basically put the text on subsequent lines and have a line break at the end, okay? And so then our contents, um, I'm gonna go ahead and here and put in uh, the names of my functions. And so again, I'll come back to mine and maybe for now I'll copy this and paste it in. Um, I don't need um, all the description of each of the, uh, the different functions, right? So I'm gonna go ahead and remove those. And I think those are the functions. So I'll go ahead then and uh, just reformat this. And I'm not sure if I need those parentheses. And so that's a great way to use someone else's repository because then I could look at their repository and see how they formatted things, right? And so again, um, I'm not sure what I did with it, but we'll go back to that underscore package down YAML page. And then if we scroll down to reference, we then see contents, and then each of the functions has that hyphen, but it doesn't have the parentheses. So I'll go ahead and remove the parentheses. All right, and I'm gonna go ahead and build the site. 
before I move on to the data because I want to see that this functions page or part of the page works right. All right, so it's complaining because I didn't include all of the topics. So that's nice to know that if you don't include all of the functions or data uh, in your reference uh, listing, that it's gonna complain. So I'll go ahead and add that in, and I'm gonna see if I can't do it based on what I did here for functions, rather than going back and looking at the MicropML version. So again, I'll do title, I'll do data sets, and then I'll do DESC, and I'll say, uh, example, uh, reference, sequence and taxonomy that can be used for practicing use of the packages uh, functions. Okay. And then here we'll go ahead and I think I need to come back a layer and then do contents and then Yep, we'll do a hyphen and then we'll do train set nine underscore uh, RDP. And we'll also do the PDS version. Okay, so we'll save that. I think this should work. So let's try that again. All right, so that rebuilt the site. We've got that, go to reference, and then we can see that there's the functions and the data sets that worked. Awesome. Of course, I could subdivide functions further to do like, you know, read functions versus print functions. And, but I mean, I only have six functions, so I don't think I need some amazing level of organization. I think if we looked at like ggplot2 and looked at its reference section, we see that there's a bajillion things, right? And you can see that it actually has a table of contents on the right side of the page for how to get to like faceting. And you can look at like the three functions for faceting or the numerous functions for labeling, right? So I think that looks good. Um, and I'm pretty happy with that. One thing I want to add, although it's a little bit premature, is uh, the change log. And so the change log comes from a news file, which I don't have yet. So if I go to news.md, I can see kind of what it looks like. That if I do code, I can see that this is a markdown file, right? And, and so that's nice. Um, I've noticed it's got development version here. And I wonder if they had that in their own. So I'm looking at theirs. Uh, I don't see that, that, that development, um, where'd it go? Yeah, that development version there. So I'm gonna skip that. And so what I'll do is go ahead and copy this as an example. Let's see if that's under file, new file, markdown file, okay. And I'll paste that in, save it, and we'll call this news. And that is in Phylotyper, so we'll go ahead and save that. And let's see, so this is the first release of Phylotyper. And I'll call this Phylotyper 0.1, cool. It's actually currently, I think, 0 0.099. Yeah, 0 0.0.900. I'm gonna leave it at 0 0.0.1, because that's gonna be the version number I think I'm gonna put to CRAN. Um, so I'll be cool with that, okay? And so we'll say major functions um, and let's see, I'll say uh, example data sets, right? And then uh, vignette, I'll do that. And I'll say getting started, All right? And again, I'm gonna take a few minutes to massage this a little bit to make it look good for my purposes. All right, so I think this looks good for an initial news um, page. Let's go ahead and build the site again and see if that shows up in our rendered local version of the website. Very good, we've got our change log across the top here. We see the very first version of Phylotyper 0.0.1. Again, that doesn't quite exist yet. We're getting there. Uh, and so as I would add new releases, I would basically move this, this will always be at the bottom, right? So new releases would go at the top and I would include in here just kind of a description of what each release included, right? To kind of let my users know that if they got a new version, uh, what I had changed. And so that's really helpful uh, to communicate to your users. Now I'm ready to go ahead and recommit everything. Maybe this time I'll do it within GitHub. Uh, so I'll go ahead and click on all these boxes to stage the changes, and then we'll go ahead and commit. And so I'll say 
adding to make website look decent. And we'll go ahead and commit and we'll push. And we see uh, that that push also activated GitHub Actions to run this. So I don't know how long this is gonna to take to run. Last time, like I said, it took about 13 and a half minutes. Maybe it'll go a little bit faster if it doesn't have to install everything. But for some reason, I, I suspect it's not gonna work any faster. It does seem odd to me that it takes so long to render, but who knows, perhaps creating that environment to build uh, the site just takes time. Wonderful, so that did run a lot faster, under two minutes. Let's go ahead to the site, hit refresh, and voila, there is our website. Looking pretty slick. I'm really happy with the way this looks. Um, again, we have a fairly simple package, um, and yeah, there's no need to kind of go crazy in formatting things or adding all sorts of text because I, th I think it's pretty simple. Um, and yeah, I'm, I'm pretty happy with this. Let me know what you think of this website. And, and more than anything, what I really want to underscore is that it is tremendously easy <laughs> um, to create a website for your R package using package down and use this. Uh, it did take five minutes and that was me just kind of flapping my jaws to get something up, right? And what I think is really slick is that it's using text that you've hopefully been writing as you've been developing the package, right? So it used my readme for uh, the main page, right? It used my vignette for the phylotyper article. It used all my functions for the reference page along with, uh, when I click on each of those, the help, the, that Roxygen, right? Uh, to go ahead and see all that stuff as well, right? Um, and then the change log comes from the news file. So I really like how it utilizes everything that we've been developing along the way, as well as because we've been using Git and GitHub, it is now being hosted on GitHub for free. Um, and I'm putting this to my own URL that um, is like a whole nother ball of wax of how you set up a custom domain name. Um, I will just say that like this is in stark contrast to what we have experienced developing the mother software package. So our mother software package is written in C++ and we have help built into the source code uh, that is then rendered with like a help function. But it's really painful to keep that current with the text that we have on a wiki, right? And so we've got different types of documentation in different places. And it's just, it's just a pain, right? Whereas this is so nice because as we've already seen, like the R documentation is in the R code. And then this website is really just a pretty version of kind of the ugly R documentation. So I really like this. I'm really a nice, uh, I'm really a big fan of this. You'll notice of course that like the formatting for ggplots help um, website looks a bit different than ours does. Obviously there's some different styling going on. Uh, they have a nice hex sticker. I don't have a hex sticker. Uh, Micro Pamel had, maybe I'll have to come up with some type of hex sticker for my file type of package. Who knows? Um, but what, what again, I would encourage you to do, as I showed you with MicropML, is to find documentation that you like. And if it's structured and formatted in a way that you think is pretty slick, well, click on that Octocat in the upper right corner here, go to the file that you think is generating that or resulting in that formatting, that underscore package down file, that, that's got a lot of really cool gems in it. But kind of look through, um, look through that and, and see if you can kind of experiment with updating your web page to make it look like more like the theming and kind of the styling of another uh, package down site. I think it's really powerful and it's something that, again, I just, I just think is really slick and really awesome how it's all so integrated and how this package down package just makes it so much easier to build out these types of websites rather than kind of building a Jekyll-based website. Oh my gosh, if I had you all building Jekyll-based websites, that would be pretty horrible. Um, that, that makes me think maybe I will actually do that someday, but not today. Anyway, hope you liked this and got a lot out of it. Let me know if you've played around with building a package down website. I'd love to hear about your experiences and any cool kind of uh, gems you have found along the way that kind of uh, make your site pop a little bit more. All right, well, I hope you've subscribed to the channel and you're telling your friends about what we're doing here on the Riffamonas channel as we continue to build out the Phylotyper package. All right, I'll see you next time for another episode of Code Club.